What's up, everybody? It's Erica with Not Your Average EDC, and today we are talking about Swiss Army Knives! Da, 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 da. But before we get started, uh, we've gotten a lot of new subscribers to the channel lately. I Last time I checked, we were, I think, close to 3,200, something like that, and we haven't even been running for a year. I'm not sure what we're at now, but... Uh, uh, well over 3,000, so I wanted to say thank you. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Erica. Um, I'm just a, a good old country girl up here in New Hampshire. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about, about myself in case you're new to the channel. Um, I've been into knives my entire life. My father worked at Chicago Cutlery. He made knives there. And boy, ever since I can remember, he had me into knives and flashlights and just things, things to help you be useful in the world. Um, much like the Lanny's clip I'm carrying right now for March, my father was really into the traditional knives, the old school stuff that was proven to work, and uh, he always carried, you know, a red a red bandana with him and a, a good old lock back, and, um, you know, he just, he, he liked to get stuff done, and he kind of taught me to do that, so... I've been into knives my my literally entire life. I remember being, you know, six years old and building little forts and cutting cutting with a saw and a Swiss Army knife parts for my fort and making little swords and uh, just, I just loved them, man. I've been so dedicated to being useful in this world and having good tools on me ever since I could remember. So um, the, the passion never faded. I'm almost 27 now and I've been into knives my entire life. So I, I made a, an Instagram page for, uh, you know, my, my passion to show my knives. Uh, and then I, you know, recently in the past year got into testing, which was um, something I kind of just fell into. And I, I was pushed to make a YouTube channel by all of you lovely people. Um, <laughs> of course, the dogs are gonna go off. That's a, a normal thing if you haven't been watching. Um, yeah, I made a YouTube channel. I started testing knives, guys, and um, we'll just go see what we are barking it up. Absolutely nothing, I think. Anyway, um, <laughs> I started testing knives, and uh, before I knew it, the the channel blew up. I'm at you know well over seven thousand followers on Instagram, and I guess people are enjoying the the honesty and the humor. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess the honesty is a little forbidden in this community at times, and I just can't help but being honest. So uh, we're on our way, man. We're we're sailing into bigger and better things here, being truthful and honest, and I'm very blessed to be where I am today. So uh, with without further ado, we're going to talk about some Swiss Army knives today. Um, but before we get started with that, we'll just look at today's carry and the carry for March, the uh, case knives. Lanny's clip, a beautiful traditional knife, uh, not very well built, but aside from that, it's gorgeous, and just the design in general is is quite the beauty. Um, really nice lock back. You can hear the authority. Good snap there. Beautiful clip point. It's just gorgeous and a pleasure to use. Uh, like I said, fit and finishes. Um, it, pretty well below the bar but aside from that uh design wise it's it's a really nice knife so let's talk about swiss army knives these are these are something that um i've always carried i've always carried a swiss army knife i remember uh when i was nine years old for christmas my mom got me my first real victorinox swiss army knife before then i had all had all the knockoffs and the stuff that you could buy at the you know town grocery store and such and um they were just you know, garbage in comparison to the real thing. And I remember, I remember that morning opening a real Victorinox Swiss Army knife, uh, the classic SD. <laughs> Just a little tiny thing, but boy, was I over the moon about it. And ever since then, I have found uh, absolute pleasure in using them. So I've always carried one since one, since I was nine. My change has been up to, you know, bigger Swiss Army knives. I started with the classic SD and now we're up to the normal size ones, of course. But I wanted to talk about them because I think they tend to be underrated. And um, I just, I see a lot of people carrying multi-tools with pliers, but then the Swiss Army knives seem to kind of not get the attention that they deserve. So let's talk about them a little bit here today. Uh, right now, 
I'm carrying the Victorinox Spartan in Onyx Black. It's a limited edition version. Really beautiful Swiss Army knife with that black, all blackened parts. This isn't a coating. They just darken the steel itself to be black. Absolutely gorgeous. This is the one I've been carrying today in the past couple days. But the reason I wanted to touch upon this is because there are so many different types of Swiss Army knives. I'm not sure if everyone knows about them. So your classic one, in in my terms of being classic, would be the, the typical plastic toothpick and tweezers type Swiss Army knife, right? Everyone knows about these. Normally they're red. But everyone knows that when you go backpacking or, or on a camping trip with a family, having a good old plastic Swiss Army knife with, uh, you know, a toothpick and tweezers to pull out splinters is probably the best way to go. And there's no doubt about it, that's one of the, the best tools you could bring out in the woods with you as a companion. However, there are other great Swiss Army knives, um, and I just want to go over a couple of them. So, in the same size range approximately so let's hold these up in the same size range as a normal swiss army knife we have some a locks aluminum swiss army knives so these have some kind of like micro frag pattern aluminum on them now what you don't get with these are the toothpick and tweezers there's no way because of the construction that you could put toothpick and tweezers in these unless you modified it. So there are some pins and rivets that go through, right? You have a little space that where you can engrave a name or something there. But uh, no toothpick and tweezers. However, the tools on these aluminum ones tend to be a little sturdier and sometimes just completely different than on the plastic versions. So here on this aluminum Pioneer, we've got a main blade a really nice main blade. We've got a beautiful awl, which is very useful for all types of things. Um, and then we've got just your typical flathead with a can opener, or I'm sorry, bottle opener, excuse me, bottle opener and wire stripper, and then uh, the, the good old can opener on this side that I have modified to a little screwdriver. So. Some differences would be between the plastic and the aluminum right off the bat. Um, on the Spartan here, on the plastic versions, we're given, if, if yours comes with a, a reamer or an awl, if you will, uh, we get a T-drive reamer. So every plastic Swiss Army knife that comes with one of these, it will be a T-style, so T-shaped reamer with a little sewing hole. And this is more or less for leather work, not so much anything else, but you've got, um, can you see that? A little trench in there with the hole for your string. Very sharp, all good stuff, but mostly for leather work. And then on the Alox models, you get an actual awl that you can use for wood and um, other harder materials. You don't get the, uh, the area, the little slot to put any string through or anything, but you still get a very sharp piercing tool. So uh, two very different options if you need something pokey in your EDC. Um, you have two fabulous options, but they're, they're also very different depending on which model you get. The uh, screwdrivers, the large flatheads are very much the same, whether you get the plastic or the Alox models. So there um you know a little a little beefier on our alox model however very much the same design the plastic model is just a little smaller and um let's pull out the can openers here basically all of the implements on the alox models are just beefier now this was a can opener. I dremeled it off into a small screwdriver, but if we grab this little cadet here in Alox, again, very much the same design, just different sizes, right? So, basically, if you go with a plastic Swiss Army knife, uh, they tend to have a way larger variety of tools that you're able to access. However, they 
are a little less durable, I guess I would say. Everything in the Alox models tend to be beefed up. Now, um, there are plastic Swiss Army knives that are kind of a carryover from the Wenger models. So we had Victorinox and we had Wenger or Wenger, however you want to pronounce it. And then they came together years ago as one company, but the tools were very different. Uh, for example, the Swiss Army scissors on the Victorinox were not serrated and the Wenger uh, scissors were serrated. They had little tiny micro serrations and they did carry those uh, serrated scissors over into the current evolution series so we do not have wenger as a, a company anymore it has integrated into victorinox however uh victorinox has a line of plastic swiss army knives called the evolution series and it is kind of molded to the human hand so you have rubber inserts on them and then some finger molds on the scales and a lot of the implements from the wenger series carried over into the evolution series uh, the serrated scissors as an example. So if you're looking for kind of um, very heavy duty, uh, you know, Wenger style uh, file and scissors and such, just look at the Evolution series. You will find that there. I don't have one of those to use in a, as an example right now, but I think I'm going to pick one up at some point. Let's look at the Harvester because this is the same size as the Pioneer here. However, the, the Swiss Army 7, or the Harvester, doesn't come with a keyring knob like this one does. So, uh, basically, there are, you know, the Farmer, the Pioneer, uh, those types of Swiss Army knives, and they all tend to have the keyring thing. And then you have a series of numbered Swiss Army knives in ALOX, uh, like the Swiss Army 7, and there's a few others. And they are the same size, but for some reason they don't have the keyring thing so if you if you're looking for one that doesn't have this you can check out their numbered series and these are really cool because they're very they're targeted toward a specific audience so this is card, called the harvester it is exactly for harvesting you have a beautiful hawk's bill right here for harvesting fruits and veggies in your garden it's very sharp it's it's just a very useful blade um, bottle opener. We have a wood saw here. Of course, if you're going to be working outside or on the farm or anything, having a good, reliable saw is a great option. A nice, beefy main blade. And these are thicker and kind of like longer, in a sense, than the plastic ones. So... You can can you see that uh, this one is a little bit wider in this dimension and just a little bit longer and also uh, thicker much much thicker on the a locks again sticking with that kind of like beefy tendency of the a locks models and we have again that incredibly useful all on the harvester. So a lot of really great tools for when you're out on the farm, in the garden, etc. Harvesting your fruits and veggies. Uh, great option. You don't have that little silly key ring hanging off if you don't want it. Um, and if, you, if those are all a little too big for your use, uh, the cadet model is a very slim and short ALOX model. Again, you don't get the toothpick and tweezers, but if you're looking for just a few useful tools, um, the cadet is much shorter than the plastic ones, much thinner, right? And this one only has four tools, but hey, if you only need four tools, then, um, you're in luck. So we've got the, the can opener, bottle opener, main blade, and a file which has been improved because the last time I had a cadet, it had the um, kind of like rocky looking file that was, it almost looked like it was inserted in here. And now we have just the straight file. So that's interesting. They must have changed that. But uh, just a few 
really useful tools in there in case you only need a couple. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't think I need a Swiss Army knife, and maybe you don't. Uh, the reason I like having one, number one, I really like the plastic ones because I, I use the toothpick and tweezers very, very often, I would say on a daily basis. And also in the plastic ones, you can store a tiny pin, which is very useful. Um, if you don't need toothpick and tweezers, I would go with one of the slimmer Alox models. But what's really cool about having a Swiss Army knife is you kind of have your basic tools that you would need in case kind of like an everyday occurrence pops up where you, you know, have to tighten a screw on um, your light switch cover. Or maybe you have, you know, a little thing that you hang your keys on by your door and it comes a little loose, you can tighten that. Uh, you can even get little eyeglass screwdriver inserts for the corkscrew so that you have a little tiny eyeglass screw screwdriver for your glasses if you wear those. Just a lot of useful handy tools in a tiny little package, very reliable. But the main reason that I carry one is because it gives me versatility with my blades. So at this point, I'm carrying four blades at a time. I have my main blade that I'm testing for the month. I will have a fixed blade of some sorts. I will have my Victorinox Spirit X, which is a multi-tool with pliers on it, and that has a blade. And then of course I have a Swiss Army knife, so that's four blades that I have on me at all times. But somebody brought up the other day, oh, uh, who was it? FW Glock guy or something? Uh, if you're watching this, you know exactly who you are. I'm talking to you. You mentioned that you like having a small, sterile, razor-sharp blade on you for food prep and, uh, you know, cutting your apples at lunch and stuff. And I have kind of always done that, but I never realized that that was actually what I was doing. I've gone in and out of carrying multiple blades, but um, I always carry a Swiss Army knife, and, and that is a good point. I kind of have always used my main blade on my Swiss Army knives as like a razor sharp kind of sterile option if you will because I use my main blade for everything else all the dirty work right so it's really cool that you could kind of keep in mind that you have a just an absolute razor of a of a blade here accessible at all times thin slicey incredibly easy to sharpen and um you could keep it clean at all times for uh, projects that need a nice clean razor sharp blade or your food prep or what have you at lunch but um on the on the flip side of that on the other side of the spectrum you could also because these are so cheap use your main blade as kind of your beater blade if you're one of those people that tends to want to kind of baby your main blade or you you're not quite sure how to sharpen it yet so you gravitate toward a different type of blade or a box cutter for your hard work until you learn how to sharpen your main blade. These Swiss Army blades are fantastic little beaters. Uh, they're, like I said, they're very easy to sharpen. They come crazy sharp. If you dent it or chip it or anything, it's really easy to fix them because the steel is treated pretty soft and it's just a soft stainless to begin with. But, um, this could also be kind of like your beater blade, right? If you are nervous about using this for cutting through a box that has staples in it or something, you could always use your Swiss Army blade as kind of a backup or your beater blade, one that you don't care too much about because what, worst case you break it, you can just buy a new one. They're very easy to purchase. They're always available at, you know, Amazon, all the knife retailers, they're just crazy accessible. So you could have it as a razor sharp sterile blade or just an absolute beater of a blade and always have that option with you. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to emphasize a couple really cool points about Swiss Army knives. I, like I said, I've always used them. I've always carried them. Uh, if you get one of the, the smaller ones, you know, they weigh nothing and you've had, you have a lot of versatility with those tools there. Just makes you a more useful person in society, right? Um, and that's what we're always aiming for. We're, the, the use your shit movement is not only using your knives, but using your head, using your brain, being a productive part of society, a productive part of your community, being able to help people. And even if it's just something as silly as, uh, you know, being at a family party and being the one that has the knife to open up the kids' presents and a couple of screwdrivers on you to put the kids' toys together and put the batteries in, uh, it's noticed. 
You being useful in this world is noticed, whether you realize it or not. I know for a fact that everyone that I spend time with, if something breaks or um, needs to be worked on, I can't tell you how many times I have heard, oh, Erica, I guarantee has the tools on her to do that, or I guarantee she has the knowledge to know how to put that back together. Let's grab her real quick and have her help. So uh, just some just some gospel for the day, guys. I hope you're having an awesome night. I'm going to go exercise the dogs here. I hope that you're all doing well. I love you all. And um, as always, go use your shit. I will see you on the next video.